All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be talking about Joe Rogan and his relationship with Howard Stern and his time on the Howard Stern Show, because I'm sure most people are aware that Howard isn't the biggest fan of Joe, because it seems like the only time he's made headlines in the past few years is when he criticizes Joe and his podcast and his political takes and his takes on coronavirus and all that kind of stuff. But unless you really know your Joe Rogan or Howard Stern lore, you're probably not aware that Joe Rogan and Howard have had a pretty tumultuous relationship for almost 20 years now and that's what we're going to be checking out today because i thought it was pretty interesting looking back on it knowing what joe rogan has become like the top podcaster of all time and knowing that Howard Stern is probably the top broadcaster of all time. And these two were each a big fan of each other. And Joe was a regular guest on the Stern show in the early 2000s when it was a big deal to go on there. Like going on there back then was probably like going on the Joe Rogan experience today. So it was a pretty big deal for Joe to be going on there consistently. And it seemed like he was a good fit on the show. People enjoyed him. It seemed like Howard enjoyed him. But that didn't last very long and things soon took a turn. So before I really get into it here, I just want to give this Reddit user credit. This user, Cormano, he made a whole post about Joe and Howard's relationship and his time on the show and everything. And he even linked some audio clips I'm going to use. So big shout out to this guy because I was looking for more information on this because it's really hard to find any audio or footage of Joe on the Howard Stern Show. But this guy found some of the best moments. And what I'm going to start with here is Joe's first appearance on the Howard Stern Show, which I believe was in 2000. And that's right after news radio ended. And it's a year before Fear Factor started. And what really got Howard's attention was this sketch that Joe and Brian Callen did. And he says I got a flat ass. What? Fuck that bitch, she said that? Yeah. Man, fuck her. You got a great ass. You really think so? Yeah, man, don't fucking listen to her. Look, turn around, let me see your ass. Oh, man, that's a great ass. Yeah? Yeah, it's round and muscular. Look, let me see, like, take your pants down so I can really see it. Okay. So, what do you think? Mikey. That is a great ass. I wouldn't lie to you. <laughs> Look at yourself. You're tripping over yourself here. Standing here with your pants down by your ankles like a fucking moron. Just take them off. <laughs> yeah, I guess that looks kind of stupid, right? Yeah, you're going to trip and break your fucking head open. <laughs> All right, let me see you again. I bet I couldn't even fit my in your ass. That's how muscular it is. Ah, come on. I'm serious. Look. I'm actually not totally sure that that was a sketch. That might have just been a reality right there. And of course, Howard joked about that when Joe went on the show. But like I said, this was a big moment for Joe because the Howard Stern show was insanely popular. This was when it was close to its peak. And Joe's appearance was a good one. It was only like 20 to 25 minutes, but they talked about a lot and it was really entertaining. And obviously Howard enjoyed him on there because he brought him back on a bunch of other times. And I think he might have, I think Joe might have been in the running for Jackie's spot. I'm not totally sure. But this is also right before his career really took off and he got the hosting job on Fear Factor. A lot of people don't know your name though yet. You're on the verge of breaking, right? You know what I am? I'm that guy that people see you down the street and they go, hey, didn't we go to school together? I go, no. They don't know no. why they know you. Yeah, they go, where don't do I you... know you from? I, go, I don't know, dude. Don't you, uh, are you famous enough now you get into the Playboy Mansion and stuff like this? Uh, I would never. I think, you know, that's got to be one of the most boring things in the world. You would never around. go, right? No. You don't want to look like it's, some horny guy. I think guy. it's kind of creepy. So that part at the end there where they're talking about the Playboy Mansion, that's definitely some foreshadowing because only a couple years later when Howard was doing a show in Vegas where Joe was one of the guests and the night before, apparently Howard was going out to one of the strip clubs and Joe was also there. And then on the show the next day, Howard and pretty much all of his crew were talking about how they were a little taken back by how Joe was talking about and talking to, I believe, the strippers. And sorry for this audio quality, but this shit is really hard to find. And I think this is the best we're going to do here. I remember seeing this on YouTube like four or five years ago, but now it's not on there anywhere. I don't know if that's because of bent pixels or because of Howard Stern. Anyway. I figured I'd just walk in there and uh, not really know anyone. Everyone was there from the show. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had a big appearance there. Well, what? Yeah, Artie had an appearance here, and Stuttering John has one there tonight. But uh, Joe Rogan, you see, you try to act like you're above the strip club. Oh, come on. What are you talking about? How am I trying to act like I'm 
like I'm above it. You should see this guy's like nose. I'm trying to act like I'm above it. Well, I mean, you're oh. like, oh, these girls, uh, they, they don't what? like me. They're yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. No such thing. All right, I thought you were, and then I always see you sitting there. What are you talking about? You know what? <laughs> you're making this up. Joe Some Paradise is perfect. perfect. Joe uses the word whore about 20 times an hour. Yeah, he goes, yeah. oh, these whores are sitting there. No, they no, want to love these like, girls. I don't say it that way. Yeah, you know how it works. I think you're angry with women. Well, he does that whole routine about the girls who are are angry because he's using a dollar to get them to take off their clothes. Yeah, yeah. that is a good routine. I'll be using a bumblebee costume for that later. When we were at the pool, Howard, you know, Joe looks at me and goes, look, these are lower shelf hookers here tonight. Oh, really? They were lovely first girls. <laughs> oh, stop, Howard. That first crew was rough. Come on. You think, you think because a girl takes her clothes off and dances that she's a whore? No. She's not, not a whore. She's not a whore. Yeah. He's just girl bottom whore. shelf whores is what he said. That's what it was. The first crew. What did I do? Fair factor, guys. Look at you, you fair factor guy. You're just paranoid of women. Look at you. You were so mean yesterday. You were mean. How was I mean to you? You were mean. It's crazy that Howard is saying this stuff. Like right after this, they play Butterface, where they bring out girls who have like really nice bodies, but their face are just like busted, and then they just roast them right to their face. So if he's calling you out on this shit, it's not a good look. Or maybe he's just being a hypocrite. I don't know. But it sounds like everybody was a little freaked out by it. And again, this is like 20 years ago, so I really don't want to make a big deal about it. I mean, if all this is true, it's possible Joe's changed. Like I doubt he's still saying shit like this. But I just want to show this stuff because this is kind of the start or the beginning of the end of their relationship and things only go downhill from here because Howard keeps digging into Joe's personal life, which is obviously part of the show. Like if you're going on there, you know he's going to try to reveal like the darkest shit possible. Like that's what makes it so entertaining. And Joe doesn't seem like the person that likes to air out his dirty laundry and he's not looking to be involved in any kind of drama or anything. And I'd say even Howard might have taken things too far, like he does usually, like most of the show is him taking things too far. And as you'll see later on, he never really lets the stripper thing go. So that was like the real catalyst. All this other stuff, I'm sure this just added to it. Like on one of the shows when Joe was sitting in, Howard brought in Joe's ex, who was a girl that was on Survivor, I believe. And she might be an actress or something too. And she revealed that Joe cheated on her. Those are old times, and I've forgiven him for hurting so I, is it oh. a, How did he hurt you? Did he cheat on you? <laughs> he did. Yeah. Joe! Oh, Joe! Way to go! Oh. What is your oh. problem? <laughs> did you think you had an exclusive relationship with him at the time? This when is on the radio for the world. <laughs> I did. You did. Oh. Joe. Joe. Oh. You're going how hard you on me, bro. Out? Joe, how let me you ask you. Hey, I mean, enough. Why cheat on it? Why not be honest? Uh, you know what? We used to have huge fights, and then I would... Oh, know, so you figured uh, you were away. broken up at that moment. Look, dude, we used to have the worst. <laughs> you know that she stick? Doesn't take yeah. Any crap yeah. She goes we weren't nutty. together then, honey. Like, what would you find about it? Oh, whatever. What, I mean, you've only known each other for six months. What, like, yeah, would she tell you? you? Things only got worse from here, and you could tell by his reaction, he was, like, just shocked. He's like... This is on the radio for everyone to hear. But probably one of the funniest things Joe's ever said was when Howard asked him why he was cheating on her. And things go bad. <laughs> but we're still friends. We've been friends for no, a while. I know you're friends, but like, like, what would you, you find about? You realize that you, your personalities don't mesh. Yeah, you better off being friends. Oh. Yeah, but why the cheating? Because uh, I want to have sex with other chicks. <laughs> <laughs> Which hmm. would have been fine if you had just told me that's what he wanted. Well, didn't she satisfy you? She's, she's a very pretty girl and she's very good in bed. It had nothing to do with it. It was just the fights. And he brought up one of these fights, one of these arguments that they got into, and it just sounds insane. Oh. And jo so she called me and she said, Jerry, Joe's seen someone else. <gasps> wow. Dude, well, first of all, we have been out. in you a were huge actually having a relationship. fight at that time, Ooh. by the way. Let's let's be and honest. And started you know, every with. single Dude, fight. Dude, you did. You were crazy. Oh, she's you want to be about honest? That. How is she crazy? Oh, first of all, like uh, the first part, fight that we ever got in, she told me she never gets nervous. That was the fight. She told me she never gets like, nervous. I did not crazy. say I never get nervous. She said you never get nervous at auditions. And I said, that's I did crazy. Be... Everybody gets nervous. Why would you fight about that? Why would you that? She said she I don't like nervous. when people lie. Oh. I hate that. 
When people lie Wait about a second. When and people it's are his fake. choice to decide whether yeah, they're you lying decide. or not. It's crazy. Wait you a second. Decide. Anybody Jerry says, says wait, now you're sounding crazy. Jer so that's a pretty bizarre thing to argue about. But also, sometimes I feel like some of the worst arguments are over the dumbest shit. I don't know. I'm sure he just regrets all this now. I'm sure he regrets even going on the Howard Stern show. Because it was a wild ride for him. I mean, at first, it sounded like he loved it. Because it's a lot of exposure for him. And he seemed to enjoy it. The fans liked him. He got along with Howard but then it just slowly started turning into a nightmare and things just kept getting worse and worse. It just seemed like Howard loved embarrassing Joe. And I mean, that's usually how the show works. He just brings in somebody and digs into their personal life as much as possible. But he really did Joe dirty with this one. I can't believe he pulled this off. I don't know how he did it. Apparently when Joe was on there, he had some girl in the waiting room and she's supposed to go on the show to play Stump the Bowie, which is a music trivia game with Baba Bowie. And while she was in there, she said she had a one-night stand with Joe Rogan. So they brought her in to talk about it, and this is what she had to say. When did you meet Joe? It's like at least seven years ago, right? Yeah, it was about six years ago. When 1997. He was my first one-night stand. You're kidding. No. No kidding. Nope. And, it wasn't really a one-night um, stand. It was like uh, a trailer. No, it was um, a trailer. A trailer. <laughs> trailer. Where did you meet? Where did you guys meet? Um, that, by the way, you were Joe's 350th one night stand. Uh, that, that's fine. I learned a lot. Where from did Joe. you meet Joe? Uh, comedy store. You learned a lot from him. Yeah. That's sweet. Um, that actually, I'm, I'm here to. Think. I'm, gonna, I'm going to thank you in the end, of course. But um, yeah. So what did you learn that, from Joe? Um, well, after that wonderful one night stand, I got pregnant, and I. What? Yeah. What? And and the thing about it is, is you have to understand. What? Uh, Joe, you, you, you knocked her up. Are you kidding? Did you know no, that? okay, but no. you have to understand. Um, for one, I'm not the type of person who's going to like, you know, use something against somebody. And for me, it was kind of like. How old's your son or uh, daughter? I, I, I never kept it. Thank you, Jesus. Wait a minute. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, exactly. Thank. You. So, I mean, this could be a bit. It seems like it's almost, like, too perfect to be real. Like, this seems like some reality TV show shit. But I don't know, because it could be completely real. It's really hard to tell. But even with all that, the final straw for Joe, I believe, is when Bonnie McFarlane, a friend of his, went on the Howard Stern show. And Howard finally just said what you could tell he's been thinking. And he said, I believe Joe hates women. You were a writer on The Man Show. Yeah, I was. I was. Work with Doug and uh, Joe Rogan. That's right, yeah. It was fun. Says here, Joe would always yell at the juggies. Well, no, the Joe hates women. The, he's has he's a difficult time. Yeah, Joe Joe's weird. Like he I, definitely I go to, has a difficult time. I've gone to strip clubs with him, and he's like, get out of here, you whore. I remember yeah. seeing you know even when we were in Vegas together, and they were stripper dancers, and he was yelling all kinds of horrible things. And I was like, these women aren't doing anything to you. Why are you screaming at them? Right. Yeah. Then three seconds later, he's banging all of them. <laughs> yeah. And I'm in my room watching A and E. And you're not. Yeah, I'm nice. But those kind of women, they like it. They like, they like to be yelled at. What yeah. would he yell at them? What would he say? Well, he was like their biggest supporter. And, like when the director would go, shut up to the juggies or whatever when we were rehearsing. And, the juggies. Yeah. They, like, who knows what their names are? And uh, then, you know, Joe would go, don't talk to them that way. Or, you know, he would totally stand up oh. for them. But then, like a minute later, he'd go, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good move. So after this, Joe was just done with the show, and I'll play some of the clips where he's talking about it, but he was just over the drama, and he knew if he went on there and called Howard out, it would turn into this big thing. And also, obviously, this was starting to be a bad look for him, and Howard was really into labeling him as a misogynist, even though I think you could label Howard that and pretty much everyone else on the show. Like, around this time, it felt like everyone was just trying to do and say the craziest shit on the radio to try to get listeners and everything because it was so popular to become a shock jock. And around this time, celebrities were just unfiltered because they weren't scared of being canceled or anything like that. And they just say whatever they thought. Like, you want to hear some crazy shit? Let's see what Quentin Tarantino had to say on Howard Stern about Roman Polanski. And your 13-year-old daughter, you leave her alone with a guy who's supposed to photograph her who's 25 or 30 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you find out that he had cuddliness with her you'd freak wouldn't you no yes <laughs> he had intercourse with yes her. there'd yes. be a bullet in polanski's head yes yeah. yes i'd yes, kill him I and you'd would. kill him Absolutely. you would kill him i'd beat the hell out of him right. all right within a, within an inch of his life yeah i'd beat the hell out of him but the situ but the situation was not that she was against all this she was down to party with roman no it way. is party. against the law. Let's so get right the adult. down to it. It's oh, yeah. against the, adult the law. The okay, is supposed but, to know better. Okay. But let's talk about it the way it is. 
she was down with the party. He was down with the party. But she, she was, was uh, 13. She doesn't get to say she's down with the party. She can't sign a contract. She can't rent a, an apartment. She can't do anything. She has to get her parents permission for everything she wants to I don't believe this right. I mean, not at 13. Not, not for these 13-year-old party girls. Out there. Oh, my. Really? 13-year-old <laughs> party girls. What is that? So back then, people clearly did not give a shit. The fact that he's just saying this on the radio to millions of people is insane. How did he not realize how bad this sounds? And I'm sure when Quentin did this interview, people probably didn't even care that much. They're probably like, oh, man, it's kind of weird. But today, it's not like what would happen today. Today, people would fucking lose their minds. This man would be wiped off the planet. Which, I don't know, and maybe he should be, this is not sounding good. But it just seemed like after the first wave of cancel culture, and like once all the really serious shit happened, like the Me Too and Harvey Weinstein and Bill Cosby and everything, after that, once it got down to people getting canceled for stupid shit, then I feel like everyone's like, alright, let's just kind of wipe the slate clean, we all did fucked up shit, let's just pretend like it didn't happen and move on. And also around this time is when Joe Rogan's podcast really started taking off, and the Howard Stern show slowly started to decline. It was kind of like a passing of the torch, because even though these two shows, the Joe Rogan Experience and the Howard Stern show, are like complete opposites, the one thing that they had in common that was a big part of each one of them being successful was being anti-censorship, being free speech and saying whatever you wanted and not letting other people dictate what you say and basically just sticking it to the man. So when cancel culture happened, obviously Howard couldn't really keep up the same show and he's getting older. Like back in the day, he probably would have just done shit to purposely offend people and set people off. But now I think he's just too old for that and he's not looking to really start anything. So he became Hollywood Howie and now all he cares about is fitting in with his celebrity friends and he's not looking to do anything too controversial and he's more interested in just coasting and collecting his checks and talking to his friends who are like Alec Baldwin and Jimmy Kimmel. Like it's pretty boring. And then Joe Rogan, he basically took the reins and he became the one to fight for free speech and be anti-censorship and anti-cancel culture and just not letting anybody tell you what to do. So back to Howard and Joe's relationship. So obviously Howard had a lot of bad things to say about him and it sounded like Howard thought Joe Rogan had some issues towards women, which maybe he did, maybe, I don't know. I'm sure everyone has a different opinion on this. I'm sure some people heard all that stuff and they're like, oh my God, he's the worst person alive. He's a misogynist, like this is terrible. He's just like Andrew Tate and all this stuff. And then other people probably heard that and they're like, oh, it's not so bad. Like every guy's gone through stuff like this. So now I'm gonna get to the clips after their whole falling out and after Howard realized that Joe doesn't wanna be on the show anymore and Joe's talked about all the drama and everything because it did seem like Howard kind of felt bad and he realized maybe he wasn't being fair to Joe and he's trying to make him look like a bad guy too much and maybe he got carried away with the whole stripper thing. Like here's Howard reacting to Joe talking about why he doesn't go on the show anymore. I kind of explained it last time I was here but I, I just tried to avoid drama. You know, he said something about me on the air that I didn't like. He and said you were gay. No, he said I hate women. And I was like, come on, man, really? And he said something about us being in a strip club where we were all in a strip club. And he said that, you know, who, you girls and Howard? Were coming. Yeah, it was him. He he had uh, did a thing in Vegas and, like, hired off a whole section of this uh, strip club. I've been a part of that. Then they give you fake money. Huh? Then they give you the Monopoly money that you can I give to the girls? So. I don't remember, but I remember I was really high. And when I'm really high, I can't yeah. get lap dances. It just wears me out. Of course. <laughs> You know, it's just it's just too freaky. Yeah. You know, you just you can feel that this person doesn't really want to do this. This is their job, and you start thinking about their past. And their <laughs> so so anyway, he said that I said to them, "Get away, whores," which I would never say. And that's just not true. <laughs> Boars. Well, that sounds so, like a that's not that's, a big enough an issue to not go back on the show, is to it? To me, it was. I was like, well, one of the first of all, I'm going to have to defend that. So then, you know, whenever okay. you're defending something like that, it always yeah. automatically looks like it's you're being paper. defensive yeah. because it's bullshit. Yes. And I know it's not bullshit, so I'm like, I don't even want to be involved. And I said, I just be, I'll just be a fan again. Just One thing I can say, having known Joe all Rogan for almost 20 years, uh, actually likes women a lot. <laughs> okay, thanks for the call. I'm glad we moved past that. So who knows what actually happened at this strip club? All I know is Joe sounds like he probably shouldn't get high at a strip club because then he starts thinking about all the things that went wrong in these girls' lives and it sounds like he just loses it. And maybe he's rude to them or maybe he's just trying to like goof around with Howard or something, but he clearly didn't like the kind of person that Howard was portraying him as. 
if he was out of line at the club, then it seems like he regrets it and he just doesn't want anything to do with it now. It'd be better if he just owned up to it and said like, yeah, you know, it was an off day for me. Like I should not have smoked weed and I just had a little meltdown. But also I think he felt like it might be a bigger deal than it is at the time because Howard said he just bring it up because he thought it'd be good radio. And he did think Joe was a little angry at women, but he's like, he could have just explained how it was an off day for him. And Howard even admits that people could say what he does for a living is insulting towards women. And he says he likes Joe and he wishes they weren't feuding. And Joe even kind of says the same thing about Howard. He says that Howard, like, he still respects him. He still listened to the show at this time, but he just wouldn't go on there because he knew there would be some tension. Joe showed up at a strip club. I hadn't, I was, it wasn't my event. I was at the strip club. They had invited us over. Am I correct? And uh, we were there. I think one of the guys was making an appearance there. Either right. Gary I was, uh, I was, at, I, maybe, yeah, right? no, I was there with yeah. Joe. Absolutely. A couple yeah. of times. I don't, I don't remember this exact incident, but I know I was there with Rogan. Yeah, so we were there and maybe Joe was high or something. He was saying some shit about some of the strippers and I said to him on the air, I said, it seems like you're angry with women. You know, you were just like kind of pissed off. Like, it was hateful, you know, like you were really kind of angry. You could make the same statements about me, what I do so for a living. So he's saying he was telling the girls to get away because he can't do lap dances when he's high. Right. And and you just thought, wow, he's being kind of, Well, no, I, he was saying stuff to me about the, the women. He was saying stuff. So, you know, I don't think he wanted that out there. Uh, or, or as he says, he didn't say it. Maybe I misheard it. But uh, see, I, see, I don't I, think so, but... I always thought it was something that I talked about on the radio. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe it is something different. I remember no. we walked into the strip club, <laughs> and Joe goes, "These girls are all fucking, you know, God, they're all fucking damaged. I fucking hate these chicks. I'm not even gonna get a lap dance." Yeah, that's and what then, he was saying. And then, and then <laughs> it came time to leave, and I went to go look for Joe, and he was back from it, like three chicks draped over, and he goes, "Yeah, I'll meet you at the next place." Yeah, and I was, that was funny. You're right. Rogan stayed. I, 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 when we went on that, that was the night that I had three right. chicks yeah, draped on me, and Gary made me go I, on that bus. I didn't mean it as a, a like a whole intellectual. Like I thought Joe would just say, "Hey, Howard, come on, man. I was tired or something." Like, like we'd have some interesting conversation right. about. About right. it. But Artie, you'd seen him, what, about two or three years ago? And what? Artie came back and he goes, spoke to Joe. He didn't have any problem with the show, but he clearly does. Yeah, well, according, it's according weird. to our show log, Gary was the one who said Joe called the girls whores. I, mm. I, but I had also heard Joe saying some stuff. And I, and I said to Joe, Joe, sometimes it seems like you were angry that night with women. And I wanted him to talk about it on the air, but I guess, like, like, I guess it was a road he didn't want to go down. Uh -huh. Yeah, but it, 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 no sense in going over it a million times. I mean, I'm just sad because I like Joe. I thought yeah, Joe was, he was a good guest. Yeah, he's a great guest, guest and, and uh, we miss him. And I like the guy, so it's weird. He's but. a good comic. I mean, and he's really intense, Joe. So you know, but but you gotta. I mean, like, yeah, I did see him, and he couldn't have been friendlier. And you know, why not say, look, I'd love to talk to Howard about this and and get rid of it. You know. But I think it's funny that it's such a simple thing to me, but maybe to him it's big, probably. I but don't the know. other thing is, why would he go on every show but this one? To no, but Joe's it? saying, listen. I'm still a fan. It's just something I didn't want to deal with on the air because I understand what he's saying. Because if you start dealing with it on the air, then it becomes even bigger. So I'd rather just die and uh, I'm not going to talk about it. But I don't know. It, it seems unfortunate. But well, it's become a bigger thing because at the time he didn't deal right. with it. Apparently, one of his many attributes as a comic is he's brutally honest. And I mean, look, he said incredibly great things about you, and he he means it. You know, yeah. you're the Johnny Carson of of our generation, which. I believe, you know, and uh, now, but but now it's just like, uh, to me, let it go, you know, mm -hmm. come back, come back in and let's have fun again, yeah. you know. I like it better this way. <laughs> Whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> Once said on the air that I didn't think he was nice to women or something, like, which was probably inappropriate to say, but I said I was just trying to make some controversy. Right. And he took it real hard. And it, it, it wasn't that weird. We were out. So the relationship between Joe and Howard is so weird because it seems like they both don't really have that much of a problem with each other. And it's like, I don't know, kind of a misunderstanding. It seems like Howard, you know, he's just used to calling people out and saying crazy shit. So he doesn't really think about it. And this was actually getting to Joe. And I guess he didn't realize it. And it was too late. And now Joe doesn't want to talk about it. And he'd rather just... Be like, all right, listen, let's just go our separate ways. I don't hate you, you don't hate me, and we'll just move on. Even though it sounds like they never even had that conversation. It's more just Joe didn't want to deal with any of the drama or any of the pressure of being on that show. Because also, Joe talked about this another time on Bubba the Love Sponge's show, which is another, like, shock jock kind of person. And Joe just sounded like he's over all the gotcha moments, and he just wants no conflict, and he'd rather just stay positive. Even though it is kind of weird going on other shows and talking about this, 
because then it seems like there's more drama than really is there because if he just went on Howard's show and he's like Howard I have a problem with you saying this like I never said that and if I did it was just a bad day for me you know I'm not like that you said I'm a nice guy and they would have cleared things up so it's weird that Joe does this like all kind of behind his back but also he is right it could have turned into something bigger possibly like if Howard was like no you said that stuff I think you're an asshole towards women even though he did say that he likes Joe and everything, he doesn't have a problem with him. So who knows what would have happened. Maybe one day we'll see these two together. You know, if Howard or Gary or whoever got a hold of you, would you would you want to go on and, and, and clear that up? If, it's not, if nothing, you were in New York? clear up. What's okay, the point? Okay, well, I'm just asking, you know, though. I mean, because, you know, they, they, I mean, uh, they he's, want he's, you. I mean, I don't know what anyone can say. I mean, what what is it? It, it just, it, there's a, I don't like negativity. I All don't right. like, I don't like conflict, you know? It's not interesting to me. But I, you're a, gr but you're a great guest. What, you know, what if they said, okay, let's move on past that. You got a lot of shit to say and we got a lot of questions to ask you. Well, you know, I would do it. I mean, I'm not opposed to doing it. I didn't. I honestly did not think that anyone was going to notice well, that they I wasn't have. doing it. They have noticed, my friend. They, they well, made a big, big deal about you're, it. You're an interesting, talented, funny deal. guest, so they're going to notice. Like, if you didn't matter. I'm your big-time superstar but, now. Come on. Well, my the way I was looking at it was like, look, if I'm misrepresenting myself, it's one of two things. Either he doesn't care about me, and he's just saying those things because, you know, just trying to stir controversy. He doesn't care about, you know, anyone's reputation or whatever. Or I really come off that way. And I'm like, well, if I really come off that way, there's something wrong with me. You know, right. I mean, I. I, I, if I represent misrepresent myself so badly, you know, I think there's like, especially when Stuttering John was on the show, there was like a, a whole gotcha mentality over there. No, that's very like, true. Because like that was when the first time I, I felt uncomfortable on the show, like uh, I was on and, and uh, John came up to, uh, got on the microphone once and said, I, 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 I was talking to Joe, you know, he's like, oh, look at all these whores. You know, which is true. I did say that because there was a bunch. He they had this outdoor party by the pool, and there was all these chicks there. And they're all in bikinis. I'm like, oh, look at all the whores. Right. You said but it I said like it like way. that. Yeah. I was like, oh my goodness, look at all the whores. You know, and by, by the way, some of them were prostitutes. You know, you know why I know? Because my friend Larry paid them for sex. All right, and he pointed it out. So when I said look at all the whores, it, I wasn't really talking out of school. Like, I like how Brent, the guy next to Joe right here, he's like, yeah, they do have the gotcha mentality because he ends up joining the Howard Stern show and he has to deal with that big time and he like just loses it I made a whole video about him you should watch that I'll put it at the end of this video it's a wild story so before I wrap it up here I just want to play one more clip because this is probably one of the more recent times where Howard's talked about Joe one of the fans call in and ask him if he'll ever do the show again and Howard this time he just says that he said something to Joe off air that upset Joe which I think maybe Howard's saying that now because he just doesn't want to bring it up again. Like he's doing it out of respect for Joe, possibly. But also maybe this is something new and he did say something to Joe off air that really upset him. I don't know. I mean, all this is like speculation at this point, but let's check it out. Uh, I used to have Joe Rogan on all the time. Joe is uh, angry with me. I would have Joe Rogan on. <clears throat> all these years I've, I've wanted Joe Rogan on. I like Joe, but... He has a problem with me, and I know why. It's I said something to him in private uh, that that uh, when we when we knew each other, and he was insulted by what I said, which I didn't want. I didn't mean it as an insult. I meant it just as an observation. I thought it was maybe something we could talk about. But whatever it is, there's there's. Um, I don't even know if he has dislike or something for me. I don't know, but uh, no, I, I won't be having him on. But that's not my. That's not my idea. That's his. I like Joe, though. I liked when he did the um, where the people ate weird shit. So that's pretty much the saga between the greatest podcast host of all time and the greatest radio host of all time. Well, there actually are a few other things I could have talked about, like Howard's opinion on podcasts and Howard's beef with Ari Shafir, which is pretty good. But maybe I'll just make that a separate video because this video is going way too long. So that's about it for this one. I'm sure people are going to have a lot to say about this. Let me know what you think in the comments. Then hit the like button. Then hit the subscribe button. And I'll catch you at the next video.